has not been having a great time with money, even though it is one of the most blessed lands in the Caribbean and economically, supposedly one of the richest islands in the Caribbean. Now how so? There have been terrible excesses of spending of money by the government. This is also called budget deficits and excess expenditure, which means that there's much more going out than is coming in. Ask yourself this question, Trinidad. Is it true that the world spends more on fast food than on books, newspapers, movies, videos, music, and even education? This kind of thing is ridiculous. We need to stop our own foolish spending habits before we expect our government to stop theirs. Business and individuals are spending less while government is spending more. Now if the citizens were spending less by choice, that would be good because they would be still taken care of and have that choice to spend less outside. But that is not the case. Instead, people are spending less because prices are going up. The only way to cure this financial problem is said to be to cut spending. But let us ask you this, how much more can be cut when people cannot even afford their necessities of food? It is also said that one other way to cure this financial problem is to raise taxes. Now let us ask, who would want that with no reasonable cause? There is no reasonable cause for it. Now are we doomed to become another America where we function completely on borrowed finances? Because that's what America is. It's all show on the outside as far as money is concerned. But if you look at its foundation, it's shakier than anything else. Perhaps we will switch from the paper prosperity illusion of cash to relying more on prosperity that actually helps us, like gold. And this is something that Hungary, Iceland, and Russia have done. This has helped them to get out of that reliance on others for wealth. Because once you rely on that money, that paper money, you rely on someone else. Perhaps then we will be paid what we deserve for our precious resources, including our oil. Working in oil has lost its honor for the most part, since most of the money earned goes into big pockets of very little people, when it is a national resource being used, and some of it should definitely go to the people. That is why it can be said that many oil workers, maybe not all, but many, are selling out because some of these people take good money for doing very little and gain so much at the expense of their fellow countrymen. Especially if that countryman originally owned land in which the oil was found. Oil should be a cheap price for us but expensive as hell for foreigners who come here. That would greatly help our nation. And it's not unfair at all. Right now they take advantage of our prices and they will continue to. It's as if the foreigners have found gold in our country and we fail to utilize it for ourselves but instead just give it away for free. And speaking of gold, by the way, could gold be the reason why Muammar al-Gaddafi, Libyan revolutionary, politician and ruler, was murdered so brutally and painted by the media to look as if he was being murdered by his own people. We want you to think about this because if it's not thought about, we will never have change in this country. Electricity, for example, was free for all citizens in Libya. All banks were state-owned and no interest was charged of the citizens. Gaddafi tried very hard to give everyone in Libya a home. He even swore that they would get it before his own parents would get a new home. And he stuck to that promise. There was free medical treatment. There was free education. There was free farming equipment. There was land. There was seeds. 
And all of this was available and being given to the Libyans. Libya would pay unemployed graduates until they got employment. Gaddafi may have had some negatives, but most of the time we leave out these positives that happened. He was moving the world towards utilizing gold instead of paper money, which is built on imaginary worth. Perhaps we will have a more balanced wealth right here in Trinidad soon, which would foster more financial independence and, like Russia, possibly even rid ourselves of the central bank. Central bank, the Rothschilds owned banking cartel in our country. They need to be sent out. We need to be rid of them. Other countries like Russia, for example, have also brought their own ministers to court on the charges for the debt that these ministers have incurred on their nation. Shouldn't we move on to do the same? Do you realize that the actual foundations of how business is done and how money is made is what really matters? But it's also what is never discussed by any of the so-called finance institutions. How could you beat around the bush instead of bringing politics into our economics? You see, they both are completely intertwined. And right now, our business in Trinidad and Tobago almost always forces new innocent entrepreneurs to sell out. Where is the real business? Where is the fair business? Isn't honesty the best policy? Business today seems to be all about outsmarting others rather than serving them. Did you know that even though we have many small businesses, the government does not really focus on them at all? A wise man once told me that it reminds him of the political system. After all, the majority of us vote for it, but we are never truly represented by that political system, which they did promise. And a wise businesswoman also told me that really and truly there's a huge confusion here between who is state-owned and which companies are privately owned. Right now, so much of our money goes to state-owned companies. But is that money treated as if it was going into a privately owned company? To just a few hands instead of being used to truly help our country. Now this is pressure. Dr. Kublal Singh has stated that he believes an economic revolution has to happen. And the reasoning behind it is that our current currency is very weak and it depends on our ecological assets and our community economies. We depend on our small farms, our ecosystem, and how those things can make money. That's where our real value is as a country. But what are we really doing? We are destroying it in order to make so-called progressive means of making money, such as tar sand mining which is the production of synthetic oil. And we will get into that in a later chapter. Do we understand that the more we allow our government to make these uneducated decisions to do such destructive construction actually affects us in the long run? How is that? Because it puts us in more debt. Remember, the government went out there internationally looking for funding. They put you in debt. And now they are using that money to put you in more debt. By pushing our country towards sellout means of making money. I have nothing against making money off of oil and maybe mining it in some ways. But tell me this, would you put all of your eggs in one basket? Would you put all of your possible assets that are valuable, that will make money into one basket and that basket is oil? Would you sacrifice the great diversity of means of making money with our country and sacrifice it for one single aspect of our country. 
Do you know that makes us overly dependent on it? Do you know that you are killing our country? The money in T&T.